Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Queens of the Stone Age album. Like clockwork, Queens of the Stone Age are a California-based rock band who have proven to be one of the more worthwhile groups to come out of the more, slightly more, commercial side of alternative rock in the late 90s, early 2000s. The band really separated themselves from a lot of groups being played on the radio around this time with their hard, distorted, very memorable guitar riffs, as well as their attitude and some very passionate vocals from frontman Josh Homme and some very sharp songwriting. The tone of the band's guitars was very thick, very heavy. Occasionally they would slow things down a little bit to a somewhat stoner rock-like tempo. Of course, things like this called back to the ashes of Caius, which is essentially... Even as Queens of the Stone Age went into catchier and, and slightly more radio-friendly territory, those stoner rock roots never really left the equation, those hard-ass, tough, hard as nails. <laughs> Things like that made the band stick out as they released LPs like Rated R in 2000, or Songs for the Deaf in 2002, LPs that were an excellent mix of ferocity and infectious riffs, melodies, and choruses. It seemed like Queens of the Stone Age could just be hard as hell without really sacrificing their accessibility. However, this is a bit of a balancing act that the fourth and fifth LPs from Queens of the Stone Age didn't hit as perfectly. And this new LP doesn't really hit that perfect balance either. However, I think like Clockwork is bringing something different to the table. It's not necessarily trying to shoot for that balance. This is easily the dreariest album that Queens of the Stone Age has ever done. I actually think instead of being aggressive and incredibly catchy, Queens of the Stone Age are being moody and incredibly catchy. Josh isn't exactly strumming on acoustic guitars throughout this LP. He keeps it electric, he keeps it distorted, but there are some piano tunes, some slower songs, some softer intros, more loud, soft dynamics. The vocals feel a little bit more pained, a little bit more emotional. There's a stronger element of melody. There's a bit more instrumental refinement. At times when Josh gets dark or dramatic, he reminds me a little bit of Bowie or or even Marilyn Manson, not in a bad way. A lot of the choruses on this LP just flourish, for lack of a better word. Like with the track I Sat By The Ocean, which not only has some great lyrics on the hook, but I'm loving the harmonized guitars, the piano playing, as well as Josh's falsetto. The chorus on this track is matched with a bunch of hard rock riffs on the verses, uh, bluesy-esque guitar leads, a riff pattern that, that feels very familiar for some reason, and some building chords that segues one part of the track into the other. Da -na -na -na. There's sort of a, a, a little breadcrumb trail of, I, I don't want to say generic, but just very familiar rock music tropes being used throughout this album. And it's something that I'm completely sure Josh is conscious of in terms of how obvious all of it is, but the really great songwriting, the incredible production, just the really great heavy, heavy sound that Queens of the Stone Age brings to the table, it all just blends it together very seamlessly in a way where, where all of these ideas that might have been in separate places originally just feel so cohesive. Josh's singing, of course, is, is very convincing as well. Now there is a sense of variety among these 10 tracks here. There are tracks that are a little sadder than others. The vocals, the lyrics, the instrumentation really come together into something that is slightly depressing, like the track the Vampire of Time and Memory, which not only features some great string work at the end, Dave Grohl drumming, too, coming back into the fold on this one, some weird grainy synthesizers, and of course, Josh singing against some very patient piano chords. It's a dramatic move for Queens of the Stone Age. The only thing on this LP that to me feels more dramatic is the closer, the title track on here, Like Clockwork, another piano ballad with Josh singing for an even longer stretch of time with just the piano in his falsetto with a very memorable refrain, not everything that goes around. The explosion of guitar toward the end of the track though is just invigorating. The weeping guitars on this track have a very desert-like tone to them. This desert 
tone is very prevalent throughout many tracks on the LP. The song I Appear Missing brings guitars that just weigh down heavily on the heart. Not a lot of distortion on them, they're just sharp and they are oh, minor toned and they just jut. Oh, it hit me right there. And I love how on the verses, the bass and the kick drums just syncopate in this really weird way where they're chopping up the rhythm. It really adds some nice detail to the track. The vocals are incredibly weary on this six minute track. It's the longest track on the album. And I love how we get this weird little interlude in the midst of this LP where Queens of the Stone Age really derails the song a little bit and takes it off-roading. The tense drum work on here and the wailing guitars and the weird segues and bridges at this point in the song, it was a surprise. It was kind of exciting. I wish the band took a lot of songs in this direction, really changed them up a little bit, but still it did make this song itself quite the standout. Other songs on this LP though are not as drawn out. They're more concise, they're more hard-hitting, and no less entertaining. The song If I Had a Tail has a murderous hook. Josh brings these dark lyrics, painting pictures of him licking tears off of someone's face, swatting flies with his tail, if he had one. The lyrics just have a really devilish attitude to them. Again, we have another very desert-inspired guitar solo on this thing. And even though the vocal melody on this track over the verse is kind of redundant, maybe slightly uninspired, the groove is totally badass, and I'm loving the guitar tone. On this track, and really nearly every track on here, the guitar tones really are a glory to behold throughout this LP. When they're not heavy, they're very gritty. When they're not gritty, they're really warm. Again, we have another little reunion on this particular track with Mark Lanigan delivering vocals and some lyrics for this song. And the track My God is the Sun, one of the better guitar intros for a track, I think, this year, and it feels just as sharp as it did the first time I heard it when they premiered it online. But the song Fairweather Friends, huge group vocals on this track, and sort of an all-star cast of guest singers. Elton John singing on this track and bringing piano as well, Trent Reznor, as well as Nick, one of the band's former bassists. Even though there are a handful of collaborators on this track and, and on this album in general, they really blend in to light clockwork seamlessly. If I have any issues with this LP, it's that maybe a few parts on some of these songs just underwhelm me slightly, like the very dreary bass line on the opening track here, or even the guitar intro on Smooth Sailing, which sounds like it should be basically the television theme song for a reality show about rednecks who own gas stations by long stretches of highway. In the desert, of course. Desert, desert, desert. However, I do love the zany falsetto vocals that Josh brings to the table on this track that are somewhat soulful in a way. And the detuned guitar solo harmonies on this thing, it's so awesome, it's borderline hilarious. You know, honestly, I gotta say, overall, I love this LP. I know Queens of the Stone Age isn't on the rock fringe or anything like that. And, you know, they're, they're not trying to be, and that's completely fine. I know sometimes we emphasize that sort of thing on this channel, but, you know, we also emphasize great songwriting, fantastic production, songs with personality, great guitar tones, potent emotions, and, in my opinion, these songs have those things, and, and, and more. This is an incredibly cohesive album with its sharp, hard-hitting tracks, as well as songs that really sort of stretch out and give Queens of the Stone Age a bit more in the way of dynamics. The band really shows their more uh, sad side. And I think it pays off in, in a big way, in a great record, really. I'm feeling a strong 8 to a light 9 on this thing. If you've given it a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. This review is my opinion. If you don't like it, here's a straw. I want to give a shout out to Bryden Tracksman, who was recently robbed and shot. There's a link in the description box to donate to a bit of a fundraising thing he's got going on, you know, to take care of him because he's been shot. Help the man out. Also, I want to give a shout out to a guy who asked for a shout out. His name began with a W. Wayne and Filthy Frank. All mistakes were intentional. Only the strong subscribe. The needle drop. Queens of the Stone Age. Like clockwork. Forever.